Hello and welcome to EduTalks for Online Teaching. I'm very thrilled to present to you my guest today. He's a very interesting uh, educator, online tutor with lots of experience in online setting. He has prepared a lot of tips and tricks for us. His name is Travis. Hello, hello and welcome. Hello. Travis, hello. how do you hear me? This is Theodora or Teddy for short. Nice to meet you. What was the thing that uh, really made you start the uh, teaching online? How did you start in the first place? And when, maybe when? <laughs> For me, I started, I think, six years ago. Uh, uh, I had clients that were in, I, I worked in, I still work in Southern California, though I'm, I'm actually moving to Finland in a week. That's a different story, I suppose. <laughs> um, but I moved uh, to, to go to grad school about uh, two hours away from where I'd been working for 13 years and some of my clients wanted to stay with me so i made the compromise that i would do a hybrid setup where i would have uh, online classes uh on the week actually on the weekdays and then on the weekend for one day i would drive up to my previous location and i would usually do four or five tutorials in one day in person and i kept that business model for about four years and got kind of more and more adept i, I used different kinds of cameras I ended up doing research with Noodle. That's how we met Vetimo and uh, got used to some of the different online collaborative platforms. Anyways, um, but long story short, about six years. And um, in the past year, it's been full time remote. I'm really happy to have found a number of different solutions. But Vetimo is one of them. I've primarily been using the whiteboard option with my students, and I'll show a few of those. What I can give feedback on is more the one on one kind of collaboration. That's primarily what I do. Um, I also teach a class um, at a business school here in Southern California. I had 80 students this past quarter, so I have some commentary that I can provide as far as managing an 80 student university course. Um, what are the key benefits for your organization, for your business, for your experience? Um, so the key benefits that I would say, for one, is that you know it's safe, and I think that's why most of us are using the online presence. But there's definitely something useful um, in the tutoring world. And I think this is why I ended up using the online presence. Uh, you don't have to schedule a formal meeting. You can check in with a student for 15 to 30 minutes. And sometimes that's all that they need. And a lot of the time, there's a flexibility, you know, depending on the need of the client. So some clients might put the tutorial as one of the most important things in their day. Another client might put it as the least important, and you kind of have to um, send a couple of emails and get the parents to remind the student and kind of force the tutorial to happen. So in Southern California, there's a lot of flexibility around scheduling. Um, I find myself often starting tutorials five to 15 minutes late. Sometimes in the very last minute, the student will say, we're stuck in traffic. And it's great just to have that flexibility and go, no problem. I'm just going to go shoot some baskets. <laughs> 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 tutorial in an hour and that's great you know or i'll go hang out with my family and um so i think that there's something really nice about the quality of life that we all get from this if you allow me to ask you then how do your tutors use the online teaching for online test preparation because i think this is something peculiar and specific for you so for and i can speak for noodle pros here um at least to some extent Noodle Pros hired me to see, seek out different online tutoring methods and present to the teachers about a year ago. Um, that's one of the reasons why I'm connected with Vetimo. So, uh, but how do we use online teaching uh, for test prep? I think mostly we look at live PDFs. And, and what's really cool if you've got a collaborative um, program or whiteboard like Vetimo or Miro or some of these other platforms is that um, you can put the test literally on the screen and it depends on the income level of the client but so long as the client has um, like an ipad like an old ipad and a, and a pen they can do the test right there and you can watch them and you can give live feedback so if they say they make a mistake sometimes what i like to do if they make a mistake is i'll circle the question i won't tell them why it's wrong and then you know i'll just be like okay in two questions why don't you come back to this and see if you can figure it out or maybe i'll just write the beginning of a hint or i'll just circle the one word that they clearly misread you know and you can get those little nudges um, and they can learn in the moment with you and you can watch them think through in real time on the screen that's amazing um, but i would say that that's also what we did in person so in person very often what i would do as a tutor is i would print out two copies of the test 
and I'd work my own copy of the test simultaneously. Actually, I'd, I'd work right behind my student. So I'd never work ahead of them. If the student is on question 13, even though we should be on question 17, I'm going to stay on question 12. But I'm gonna, I, I follow the student, and then I can give some real-time advice and watch their thought process. Um, so I think it's actually better with the technology if you can get the student on the screen with you on the same PDF. And it's pretty easy. I would say in the last two years, it's become fairly available to students, to the tutors and clients who know how to do it. And I think that's the real gem of this technology as far as test prep is concerned. That's to, to work through a real test simultaneously from anywhere in the world with a student. Wow, you know, that's so. I may I'll show you, I can share screen. Um, yes, please. This is an opportune time. I can pivot to some of the stuff that I find myself doing. I think this is right. Um, we go at the two page. This, for example, would be me working with a client. This is an older one. Um, so a lot of the time, uh, I'll just use the mouse here. You can see me scrolling with the mouse, I think. Um, maybe the student missed this question. We have a conversation. I will give an example. Sometimes I'll type examples in. And I type the things that we need to remember in green. I don't like using red, unless it's if it were a student from because red is great if you're in China. Um, but in, in other countries, red is not such a great color. So <laughs> it's good to use blues and greens. In fact, I almost never use red. And I, I like switching colors up, um, as you can see. So this is working with grammar questions with the student, different rules. What I like to do is create these kinds of um, notes with the student. And, and it's, this is older from two or three years ago. So this is just my scribbles. Nowadays, the student scribbles quite a bit as well. And then I'll, I'll take that PDF and I'll save it. Let me see if I can find one where it's me and the student working together. This is some calculus. Oh, here I used. Um, there's a calculator program called Desmos, and then you can just annotate right onto the equation, which is nice. Um, here, the student was doing some work. You can see how many different colors we have. OK, maybe not the calculus. I'm pretty sure I've got a better one. Just a second. Uh, I think this is more collaborative. So this is great. This is from yesterday. Um, we just, the student and I, we planned out the rest of our tutorials. So we're going to meet on Monday. Here's the start of April. We're trying to figure out when we're going to meet. I'm moving to Finland. so. He's going to have to do more work this week. That's why I've written the homework and said, text me, because he has to keep in, in connection. These are saved notes that we had. And so we're looking over saved notes from two or three months of tutoring. The student's a, um, a high diver, so we'd put images in just to kind of maintain. Every now and then we talk. I don't know anything about high diving. So you know, I'm asking the student, what's it like You know, being up there on top of these platforms? And we keep talking about footwork. Footwork, I think, is very similar to what we have to do in test prep. So we use that metaphor to, to connect. Um, but you can see that we're like circling and scribbling. The student's written many different things. Sometimes the student's writing his, in this case, his own solutions. Um, Sometimes I'm adding things. I did actually go red here. And I remember talking about how I'm using red because China is good. And well, actually also because I really, so I, I did use red here. I wanted to make a pretty emphatic point because this student has actually slacked off quite a bit. So I, here's Naruto. If anybody watches anime, we had a, some anime pictures in there. Um, we were talking about the importance. I don't know if you've watched any, this is a Disney cartoon of, um, Dickens uh, was the story, the ghost of Christmas past, whatever that, that. Um, so Ebenezer Scrooge is the, is the, uh -huh, the uh -huh. mean Scrooge and uh, Mickey Mouse is um, I think Tiny Tim's dad or something like that. <laughs> and it just popped into my mind. It was like, when, when you're doing ledgering, it used to be you'd have a quill and a pen. Um, in test prep, what a lot of students try to do is they try to solve it all in their minds because they're used to using screens you actually have to put it on the page and double and triple check it as if it were a ledger, because that's the kind of work that's being tested. It, students make mistakes because they miss a label or they, they misread one number or they miss a negative, and they're not double checking themselves in the sand, so to speak. They're not actually writing it down and checking the, the physical movements that they've made. And so they miss some small detail. So almost always it's setups. Um, Anyways, th these are the kind of things that we're doing in the collaborative space. These notes were on a whiteboard. The student could write in circle as well. Sometimes the student would solve a problem. You know, hopefully this provides a picture of um, the kind of work that that I, I like to do. I had a, another example, maybe just the last one. So this this was a worksheet. Um, 
that I got from Teachers Pay Teachers. Uh, we're, we're working on elements and compounds and mixtures. So here's some definitions the student can use. We were actually going through Google and just finding all these different pieces of science and then pasting them around the document. So these are the different things that we needed to learn and know. Um, what is an atom? How do we name different compounds? Um, I actually got stuck at some point. So part of what I was learning with the student was how do we find a good video that teaches us this so we don't have to use the tutor anymore? Um, that's part of the goal of the tutorial with this student is that she doesn't need the tutor eventually. So how do we learn science on our own? How can we wow. use the internet? Um, so that those are the kind of things that we were talking about. Yeah, yeah, we talked about how, I don't, fun fact for the day, um, an atom, if you make an atom the size of a football field, the nucleus is the size of a pea. So the nucleus is really, really small. So those are the kind of things that we find ourselves doing. What might be the benefits for the learners of online teaching? Much more accurate records. Um, so for some students that can be helpful. Um, just with Vetimo, as with many um, platforms, you can download the notes into a PDF. And I found that to be really helpful. And then you, you can even call the notes from the previous section up and just go right back over them in five minutes. Um, and if, if it's a collaborative space, you can ask them to circle, you know, what things are the most interesting or something that they were challenged on, or you can have them rework an equation. Um, depending on the content, you can really get them to interact in a lot of different ways. And you can pull a lot of content into that space in some ways a lot more quickly than you would in person. Um, in person, you might work out of a textbook or something like that. But you could pull from 10 different sources and put them into one slideshow or you know one PDF presentation and have it right there on the screen. Um, I find myself using worksheets that were created by other teachers. Uh, there's a, a really nice website called Teachers Pay Teachers, uh, teacherspayteachers.com. And you can get just about any worksheet for $1. Um, teachers release their content. It's literally $1. So if I'm going to do a tutorial you know, where I make whatever my hourly is, it's well worth the, the time to go on to Teachers Pay Teachers and grab two or three worksheets and use those as the content. Um, just pop them right in, it's great. Another nice collaborative space I was just reminded of is called Padlet. That's one that we're using um, in my university. Um, P-A-D-L-E-T, I can save some of these things. That one's really nice because student, um, the teacher can ask a set of questions and then each student can post like a sticky note or a comment and you can, so I had 80 students working together in teams and they wrote suggestions. We gave them 10 minutes and they wrote collectively about 40 suggestions for a complex ethical scenario. And, and then we had this snapshot of the thinking for the entire class on one page. And you know, I was able to send it back so they could all look and see what everybody else had thought. I mean, how marvelous to create something like that in 10 minutes. And then they interacted and they did this and that was among other things. Yeah, those are the kind of things in this space that are so amazing. If we get down to the, the top three th tips, or you're more than welcome to share more than three for successful life online teaching, what would those be? I'll just say three words. So for me, um, the connection is important. And I think that, that that really is the art that we have to keep practicing. You know, how, how do we reach people? How do we pull them in? How do we sense the introverts? How do we, you know... I think we have to keep mixing it up um, and it depends on what you're doing. So if you're working with a class, you definitely, I think, want to have this wide array of assignments and projects. And yeah, as you said, relinquishing control, allowing the students to go work on their own and bring something back. Um, there are There's cool software out there where students can create their own quizzes for each other. I remember doing this um, when I had a regular class and students made their own vocabulary quizzes. and. I actually learned all of my SAT vocabulary from my students. I still <laughs> <because Whoa. laughs> we, we create these packets and we had packets from previous years and they would do each other's vocabulary quizzes. And by the end, we were all really good at vocabulary. Um, those kinds of exercises where you can get students to make content for themselves, um, that some, some of them might compete a little bit, some of them might not, but there's usually three or four out of say the, uh, the 20 that you have um, that you can keep and that you can use for the next class and you can build this kind of working knowledge across the courses. Those kinds of collaborations are really powerful. Um, so to me, it's connection. That's the first thing. Um, connection means the, the set of exercises that you're doing, but it also means the energy of the teacher and the, the sharing of the mood. One thing that we have to do in the online space, I think, is be even more emotive. Um, yeah, even more. And, and there's so many things you can do, right? Like you can, you can lean in and like, well, you, know, <laughs> you can make a point and then, 
if a, if a person's speaking, we can kind of fade into the background and um, allow them to take over the space. There are certain things with our body language that are really important. You can turn yourself into an avatar in different ways. I, I don't know if Vetimo has filters, but you can put on funny hats in Zoom. There, there are all these little things that you can do. And the students love this, the younger ones, because you know they grew up on Snapchat and, and these other Instagram and whatnot. So they're so good with video. Um, things that you can do with video and images are always appreciated. Moving things around, being lighthearted every now and then, telling a joke, whatever you can do that kind of reestablishes energy every now and then. Um, sometimes just flipping around and talking about something completely random. If you sense that there's no energy in the room, um, sometimes asking them to start talking about something. Sometimes I, I've had, usually in, we do a 10 week um, schedule uh, in my university. So by week seven, they're usually exhausted. And one of the best things I've found in week seven is, and it's happened a couple of times, I'll start with the lesson plan, no energy in the room, just have them start talking to each other for two or three minutes and then we return. And it's just this like refresher for them. They don't get to talk to each other very often. They really appreciate that. So connection. The second thing is management. And by management, I mean that, that we, we have to create this energy and connection, but we also have to make sure they know what the assignment is and we have to follow up. It's very easy in the online space for something to be forgotten. The student shows up and says, oh, well, I didn't get the email. And you have to say, well, yeah, you did, because I emailed you twice, and I emailed your parents, and I texted you, right? You have to have like that kind of um, background uh, stability for them, because otherwise, especially if you're doing test prep, they're not going to do the work. So you, you really have to, at least that, that's been, some students will, right? We get the ones that are just, doesn't really matter what the learning scenario, they're just going to swim upstream. But a lot of what we're doing is helping people to learn how to swim upstream. And so we have to be stable for them. Um, and then the last thing is creativity. And uh, that to me kind of infuses everything I just said, except maybe the management, but I think actually even management is kind of a creative process. Um, but I think that if we're really gonna be teachers, we're learning from the students too. And then we're just, it, it, and they know when we're doing it. And so when they know that we're learning from them, things happen, <laughs> you know? And like, and, and that's, that's the part, if there's anything about teaching that makes it worthwhile, it's that for me. Um, it, 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 there's something about just creating that that new kind of energy, whatever it is. It's like a fusion, and I think the teacher seeks that. I want to say it has been a true pleasure to uh, to talk with you, and thank you once again for agreeing to be interviewed for EduTalks for online teaching. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So, did you like our discussion with Travis? If you liked it, you can like us, you can leave a comment below, you can share your thoughts about the online teaching. If you want to share some of your tips and tricks for online teaching, please drop us an email at info at .com. Follow us on social media and subscribe to our YouTube channel. See you in the next episode.